All right, guys, we're going to keep moving forward with my next speaker. Super pumped about the next guy that's coming up here. Um, Luke is uh, Mr. Luke Shankula. He is the owner of Paragon Digital Marketing. Um, Luke owns a loan officer exclusive marketing agency where he helps loan officers increase their business in all kinds of ways. Do leads, do increased conversions from leads you already have, going back to your database, reactivating old leads, um, having higher conversions and just getting better at sales in general. And uh, definitely, I mean, Luke at this point is probably generating thousands of leads a month. And I know that his clients love the service that he provides. And so with that, I'm honored to introduce you guys to Mr. Luke Shankula. What's up, Luke? What up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Crazy morning. Honor, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is a super, this is a super fun event. You know, it's definitely, you never know how these things are going to go, right? You just, you just never know. But so far, so far technology is, uh, technology is keeping up with us. And I've been enjoying my, my orange Keef, orange Kush Keef Cola oh. for, this, for this great 420, uh, 420 mortgage summit. Dude, so, you're, uh, you're pretty brave, man, because I've been having a ton of troubles with Zoom. Um, we, do, uh, we do a live training um, in our Facebook, client Facebook group every week, twice a week, actually. Um, we've been struggling to go live. Like, we basically, everybody has to jump on the Zoom because it won't let us go live on, on Facebook. So I know, uh, I know, I think probably because more people are going live on Facebook. Plus, I think, I think Zoom went from like 40 million users to like 200 million users in like a couple weeks. So, you know, it's kind of to be expected. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we actually, it went, it, it knocked out the live when we very first started today, but I think it was because I was using some copyrighted music. Oh. And so I think it might have knocked me off because of that. When I was like trying to think during the first, you know, when Renee was talking, like, why did I get, why the live stop? And I think that might have been, that, that might have uh, been what got me the first time. Could have been, could have been. Yeah. But everything's good though. Yeah, man. Appreciate you for being on here today. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Um, and I don't know, like I have a couple slides. I, we don't necessarily have to have the slides, but uh, it's just Yeah, go for visual, it. I'm going to so. pin your video. Cool. Cool. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, I know the, uh, I know the initial um, document said I was going to be talking about organic leads, but uh, Chris Griffith's coming right after me. And I believe he's talking about something similar. So I figured we'd, we'd switch it up a little bit. Talk, uh, Talk about the, the process of converting uh, internet leads and, and why most people are failing at that um, and, and what the, the difference is between the top producers and the non-top producers, right? So let's go ahead and share the screen here. And let me know if you can see that. Yep, looks great. Cool, cool. So basically what, what, what most of the time happens is, is people try to approach uh, internet leads, Facebook leads, Google leads, like all these different types of leads the same way as they approach the referrals, right? And so obviously what, what ends up happening is low conversion rates, people that don't want to talk to you, all this kind of stuff that they're like, oh man, the leads all suck, right? And so you start to, to wonder like, what, what, what's the difference between the people that see success in just about any lead generation system that they come across and, and what's the difference between those people and, you know, the people that's, that just can't convert. Right. And so really like, we'll talk about, there's the three phases of, of kind of any sort of lead generation machine. Uh, the first step is obviously generating new loan opportunities, new, new inquiries, people that want your service. Then you have to have the follow-up process scheduling. Um, that's super important as well. And then the final step is having a proven framework to close new prospects to the loans on a consistent basis. We're, we're going to mostly skip past that first one because you know, so many times people just think just getting more leads is going to solve their problems. And, and what ends up happening is if you fill a broken system with, with leads, you're just going to get broken results. You're not going to get results, right? So if you don't have a system, if you don't have a process to take a lead from being a cold person on the internet to a, a converted lead, and that's not just from a lead to application, that's not just from a lead to pre-approval, that's not just a lead to contract, that's a lead to closing, right? Like, because you don't get paid until the deal closes. And so one of the things that we've, you know, dove, dove into over the last three years is, hey, how can we get people as close to the sale as possible, but how can we also help them, guide them, get them to the, to the finish line? Because at the end of the day, like, I was just wondering, why are these certain people just doing such, such better results, right? Why are 90% of our clients, or sorry, 10% of our clients collecting 90% of the revenue and the commissions, right? And it all came down to this one simple thing, right? It's lead handling, right? The, the end user nine times out of 10 is, is the, is, is what ends up being the, the, the difference maker, right? And so, you know, you could have the same person in the same market or two people in the same exact market. One person crushes, one doesn't. And so what, what is the difference there? Right. And so I'm going to walk through a couple of different things from a different studies, right? So the average company makes one and a half call attempts per lead. The average company takes 44 hours to respond to leads. 
um, and 55% of companies never respond to leads at all. In addition to that, uh, calling three times is 68% more effective than calling once, uh, but the probability of that happening is uh, pretty low, right? So, so as, as the probability goes up, so the more times you call, the more likely you are to convert. Um, and in addition to that, you have to remember that the people that are most likely to turn into a good deal, the people that have money, that have down payment, that uh, have good credit, they're busy, right? You have to be a persistent professional. Persistent, sorry, uh, perfect, perfect prospects require persistent professionals. You need to make the calls, you need to make the dials in order to get the results that you want, right? Because the reality is the people that have the money are busy, they have a job, they, uh, they have a family, they're busy, they're doing stuff, they don't pick up the phone on the first call. Think about like what you do when you get a call from someone you don't know. You don't pick it up, right? And again, this, this information here is not coming from me as a marketer. This is coming from three, three plus years of, of, of learning this, speaking with loan officers that are converting, working with, with multiple loan officers that are converting at 30 to 40% into application, right? Those are numbers that are ridiculous. I thought eight to 10% was great. And then I found these guys are doing 30%. I was like, well, what are they doing differently? How are they converting at such a high percentage? And guess what it was? Most of the time, they're just picking up the phone. Yeah, sure, they were better at the sales process. They were better at the actual process, but even the ones that like maybe didn't have the greatest sales process, but if they picked up the phone, they were getting deals, right? That's it. They picked up the phone, they made the contacts, they did it, right? So as you can see here, here's kind of the progression. Most people are not making more than, than, than one contact, maybe two, right? 68% of people have given up after two contacts and 80% of people have given up by three. And so if you just call them a couple more times, you're going to get in contact with them and no one else is calling them. Right, again, a couple more stats, different days of the week. I don't wanna to go through too much of this stuff because I wanna to get to the actual process of, of you know, converting the leads, um, kind of having a framework to, to you know, turn someone in because, because the reality is coming from the internet, people are not warm, they're not, uh, they, they haven't been prepared, they don't trust you. And so what, what ends up happening is, what, what people do most of the time is they, uh, when they get referrals, they're essentially borrowing the trust from the person that referred them, right? So you do not have to build that same level of trust. You don't, you don't have to build that no like, and trust factor like you do with internet leads, right? And so that is probably one of the biggest things is people try to go straight to a transactional, hey, let's get your application right now, right? And, and someone who is cold that, that has come from the internet isn't just gonna give you their social security number and let you pull their credit 13 seconds after you call them. Right? It just doesn't make any sense. You have to build rapport. You have to kind of build that relationship, establish trust, Establish that you're the authority that you can actually help them get the, the, the results that they want, right? And so you have to have that in mind, right? Again, there's, there's huge differences in, in, in contacting people. If you call them within five minutes versus 10 minutes, uh, zero, you know, 60 seconds versus five minutes. So like you can just see that huge drop off just between, was it five minutes and 15 minutes? Over 30% of leads are never contacted at all. That's crazy, right? So always make at least six call attempts. Again, these are just different surveys, different stat studies that I've, that I've seen uh, that, that show the best results, right? Certain days give you the best results. That's not to say don't call immediately, uh, but these are the days that generally get the best uh, conversions and then also the, the times that get the best conversions. Again, just kind of running through a couple of these things. I don't want to go too far into this stuff. Um, uh, but, but ultimately what we want to get into is, is the, the actual sale. Well, one is is the follow-up process, right? You have to pick up the phone more than once. And I actually forgot, I put the, um, the, the, my recommended framework for how many times to call someone at the end of it. So we're gonna go to that at the end, but ultimately it comes down to having a process to convert people. It doesn't necessarily have to be this, but it has to be a process um, because ultimately what happens is someone's coming from the internet, they're cold. They're looking for opportunities. They're looking for reasons not to buy, right? And, and again, this is coming directly from loan officers that are converting um, at a high level, you know, again, 30% of the leads into applications, 15% of them into closed deals, stuff like that, right? So these, this is coming from, from people that are doing this every single day, right? So it's very simple, intro, rapport, you could break intro and rapport into one uh, frame, uh, goals and analysis, pitch perfect, and then close, right? So let's start real quick with the intro. Um, just kind of simple, right? People, people get too crazy. It was just very simple. Hey, prospect name, it's name calling from, you know, hey, John, it's Luke calling from Paragon Digital. Saw you were looking to purchase a home and recently filled out some information on Facebook about our home programs. I'd love to talk to you about that. Do you remember doing that, right? So you're basically throwing that back into their court, kind of getting them to remember, hey, I did fill out 10, 12 pieces of information. I am interested, yada, 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 right? 
Um, rapport, so you want to start building the commonalities between you and the prospect. And again, there's different styles. You have some people that will go straight to, you know, they do a little bit of rapport, but they're, they're just a little harder sales. It just kind of depends on your style, right? But again, having a process is super, super important. So be generally interested in them. General rule of thumb, stay away from divisive topics, religion, politics, talk sports. Again, get that connection. You're trying to build that no like, and trust factor with them because they're cold. They're, they're a cold lead and they're never going to turn into a prospect if you can't build that trust. I mean, the, the, the reality is you don't even necessarily need to build no, no one like because people will, will, will do business with people that they trust even if they don't necessarily like them, right? So you actually have to build the trust for them to know that you're the person that's going to get them the best results or get them to their, to their uh, essentially to get their, their problem solved as soon as possible. If, you, if they believe you're truly the best person to help them, they're going to go with you, even if they may not like you um, or, or maybe if they don't, you know, they don't know you. Right. So you need to build that trust. The trust is, is most important. Right. So talk weather, sports, you know, kind of give them exactly what it is that um, you're going to be doing. Right. And then, you know, you don't walk into the doctor's office. And, and say, Hey, well, you're going to do an FHA, an FHA uh, 30 year with this. Like, well, we don't know anything about you. Right. So you don't walk into the doctor and you know, you have a broken leg and the doctor's like, Oh yeah, we're going to prescribe you antibiotics. It's like, well, I mean, my, my leg's broken. I need, you know, I need to get surgery. Like, no, no, no. We're going to give you antibiotics, but you don't do that. So you know, why would you do that with, with a prospect that comes on the phone? Hey, let's take your application right away. You got to figure out what they need and what they want. And you also have to dig deep into why they want that as well right? Too many times people just go very surface level. Oh, I want to move because I want to downsize. Perfect. That's the reason, right? No. The reason is they want to downsize because they're older, their knees hurt. They don't want a, a two-story house because their knees, you know, that stuff like that. You're getting into like the actual reason as to why uh, they're doing that, right? So you want them to answer you three things, right? Tell me your goals. So where, where are they buying? Bedroom, bathroom, part of town. Maybe tell them the obstacles, stuff that has had, they've had trouble with in the past, bad credit, not enough income, not enough down payment. So you're starting to kind of get a, a reality or, or figure out exactly what you can pitch them, right? What is it that, the, what are the products that they could use, right? So you want to develop the problem and need awareness. And by doing that, you're going to understand the situation and do a gap assessment. And what a gap assessment means is that you're trying to bridge the gap from where they are to where they want to be, right? So you need to identify what does that look like? What are, the, what are the things that you need to put in place for them to go from a not, not a buyer to a buyer? What, what, are, the, what are the processes? What, what are their fears? And how can you bridge that gap, right? And then also figuring out what their urgency assessment is, right? So figuring out when they want to move and not asking it in the way of, hey, what's your timeline? Because realize that a consumer does not know what their timeline is. You have to tell them what the timeline is, right? And, 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 and you do that by asking them if, if you could find the right house for the right payment, how soon would you want to move? Something along those lines where you're just putting it back in the court. Hey, if, we, if everything was fine, if everything, everything that you wanted, if we could put that all in place, when would you want to move, right? Because then you can start to realize, okay, they actually want to move now. They think they need 20% down. They think they need an 800 credit score. They think they need, you know, $200,000 in income. They think they need to pay off debt. They think all this stuff, but the reality is they don't know. They don't know what programs are available. They don't know the first time home buyer programs, 3%, 3.5% down. I mean, I know right now uh, down payment assistance are pretty much gone, but uh, you know, in regular times, down payment assistance programs, VAs, stuff like that, they don't know. So you have to dig in, figure out why they're moving and figure out, hey, maybe they can move within the next three months. So, so many times, like we hear people say, oh, well, they, they're not interested for six or 12 months. Well, how do you know that? How do they know that? Did you ask those questions or did you just allow them to give you a brush off objection and you just rolled over and let them do that? Right? Because the reality is you need to be the advisor. Um, then once we get through that, we're dig we've dug dick, this is where we're going to pitch them, right? We're going to show them the products that are available based on the information you learn about the prospects. So you're going to restate their goals, their dreams, or obstacles, right? So what are you telling me is you're looking for a two bedroom, two bath in San Diego. Uh, you were telling me you're also, you weren't able to get approved with a 640 credit score. So again, you're kind of giving them, Hey, we might be able to get this done for you. Oh, and you really want the payment at 1800. Well, there's a really good opportunity to get you proof. I don't give you a definite number. Only way to do that is to run your credit again. And then you can talk about your different options. I'm going a little quick here. Cause I know we don't have a ton of time. So, um, talking about the different options, down payment assistance, VA, FHA, whatever it is. And again, you don't always, um, you know, just because like they think they need a down payment assistance, they don't have enough money. 
again, you're the advisor, right? Like we all know that down payment assistance programs generally aren't the best for, for the borrowers, right? So can they find the gift, uh, gift funds? Can they access the 401k and borrow from their 401k if they're a first time home buyer? Like what are the other options for them to not have to do a down payment assistance program and have a higher rate, all that sort of stuff that happens, right? And so then you can start to talk to them about the rough overview of the process, right? And then finally you get to the close, right? This is where you're gonna ask for the sale based on the fact that you said X, Y, and Z, the next step is to start an application. And so we have to realize that people buy an emotion, but then justify with logic. So you have to hook them emotionally. What is it that they want to do? What are they like looking to accomplish? Oh, well, they're having a baby uh, and they want to move into a house because they need an extra room for the baby. You know, you can start to, to get into that and figure out, okay, well, you wanted to, to have a baby and expand and not live in an apartment, stuff like that. So make sure that I don't have anything. Um, yeah, and I can share these into the group. And so again, people buy an emotion, justify with logic. And uh, one thing that I learned from one of our, our tra trainers is this, this process right here, right? Like you're turning a potential negative into a positive, right? Look, there's only good news that can happen. Either we get you pre-approved immediately or we figure out what we need to do to get you approved in the future. So there isn't any bad news, right? I mean, obviously like, yes, technically there's bad news, but you're framing it in a way that's taking that negative connotation away from not being approved right now, because ultimately that just gives us a roadmap. What do we need to accomplish to get you to what your, your goals are, right? So the next step is the application, not your final decision. We know that you need this. Again, this is not word for word stuff. Some of this stuff will sound like you're a robot. So just make it your own, but realize that kind of having the process, having your own virtual script framework, whatever you want to call it, uh, so that you sound natural is super important, right? Like, because too many times we're like script. Oh my goodness. I can't do a script. It's, it's just word for word. It's like, no, I mean, a script doesn't, in my opinion, a script should never be read word for word. Um, you know, use certain things might, might need that word for word, but for the most part, you want to use your own language. Um, and lastly, right. So, so sometimes people will come up against you and say, Hey, I don't want to run my credit. It's like, well, okay. Well, there are two reasons why we need to run your credit. First, we want to see how much you qualify for. And second, and most importantly, the sellers of any home want to know you have access to funds to purchase a home. Right. So there's, there's more than one reason. Right. And, and giving them two reasons is, is smart just because it doesn't keep them bored. There's just one reason, you know, two reasons is just psychologically better. Right. <laughs> um, and then I thought I had it on here, but, oh, and so here's the, uh, this is what I was talking about. Here's the call cadence that we recommend. Again, this is, this is pretty aggressive. Um, but the reality is that, um, and, and, and everybody I talk to, they're always, they always want to wait for the automation. They want to wait for, they want to use an ISA. They want to you know, hire someone, but the reality is like what we have found working with hundreds of loan officers is that the, the best success, one comes from, from loan officers that are calling themselves or second best is if uh, a junior LO that's licensed or, or like an LOA person is licensed can take the application on the phone and then hand those off. Um, or third, obviously an ISA, because if you're not calling an ISA is better than not calling. Um, but the reality is if you want the results you want in a lead gen system, there's no such thing as plug and play. People want plug and play. They want a system that converts the leads for them. That's impossible, right? There's no such thing. So, uh, if you're going to do with some sort of a lead gen process or system, just know that you have to put in the work. You have to make the dials to get the results you want. Right. And so again, this is our recommended uh, call cadence. If you're not willing to do the work, maybe just keep networking. Right. Cause at the end of the day, you know, it's a process, right? Most, most people on Facebook, especially are, are don't like Facebook leads because what happens is they're exposed to their greatest weakness, which is sales, right? Facebook exposes people to their greatest weakness, which is sales. And people don't want to admit that they're not good at sales. Oh, I've been, I can close everybody. But the reality is like a cold lead versus a referral are two different things, right? Anybody can close a referral at 90%. But you know, can you turn an ice cold lead who has no idea who you are into a closed deal? That takes skill, that takes processes, that takes uh, work. So anyway, I don't know, that's pretty much it. I have this that's coming up. So uh, we do have a 10 app guarantee. Anyway, I don't know, I don't know. I just threw that up here. Go ahead, Nick. <laughs> you're so awesome. Man, everybody loved it. Definitely the call cadence, people really like that a lot. And yeah, I mean, if you're willing to share the slides, I know a lot of people were, pro were probably trying to take some screenshots and get some yeah. of that information down. So maybe yeah, go through it, see if there's anything you need to take off or whatever, but oh, that'd be awesome good, if, you could, if you could share that in the group. 
Are you sick and tired of spending thousands of dollars every single month on lead gen companies that promise the world and then never deliver? Or maybe you've tried running your own ads, maybe you've gone on YouTube, you've bought courses, you've tried doing all that pixel stuff and landing page software stuff and just realized that it was distracting you from being a good loan officer? Well, guess what? You're in luck because we went to introduce our loans on demand system and we went to guarantee results. That's right. We guarantee results. And we guarantee that you will get 10 applications minimum using our system and click the link below. We're so confident that we guarantee 10 applications with our system. So click the link below, watch the video and then schedule a time with our team members to talk about the exact way that we're adding three to five new loans to loan officers pipelines every single month.